Welcome back to Ancient Domains Mystery. It's been so long since I recorded. Uh, I mean, about a whole minute. Of course, it'll be a lot longer for you guys. But let's get back into it. I'm excited to see what's down in this dungeon, man. Exciting stuff. I have no idea. I've, I've never, ever been down in this dungeon before. I mean, it's so new to me. It's new for you, though. And that's what matters. Ooh, pixie. Let's kill it. They usually drop gold. Search for the door. There's some stairs. Here's a door. There's a bat. Now we just need a rat. Or a loot. Oh, I'm hitting the wrong button. Ah. Alright. Uh, a rat scurries between your feet and disappears in a small hole in the ground. I have no idea what that means. But more importantly, you sense a certain tension. That means somewhere on this floor is a tension room and we will myrtleize it. Let's milk him for crossbow bolts. Oh, there's a water trap. See if we had not had a cloak on. That was not very polite of him, was it? We'd not had a cloak on. Could have damaged our inventory or er, our equipment. If we'd not had a waterproof blanket, it could have damaged our inventory. Not something to mess around with. This is why we have a waterproof blanket and cloak. Always. Never go without them. Not super fast. That's okay though. Wait, is that in there downstairs? This level has two downstairs? How could that be? How could that be? See, in most cases when you encounter that, it means there's actually separate sections to the dungeon. In our case though, one of those leads to a shortcut that will help us to bypass our level. Oh, that little white icon that was appearing over their heads means they're blinded by this trap under our feet. So many rats. I'm guessing this was their tension room. Oh, the wolf just blinded itself. That was good. that raw meat. Definitely eat the giant rats. Okay, so there is an artifact clothing in this game, and I always forget to check for it, but how you find it is there will be a pair of clothing that I think weighs 20? Never actually found it, so I could be wrong on the 20. It weighs a different amount than normal clothing. If you find it, you want to pick it up because it's an artifact. I don't even know what it does off the top of my head. I just know it exists. It's frequently missed because, oh yeah, it looks just like normal clothing. So people don't pick it up. That's why if you watch other YouTubers, they are all about checking the weight of equipment laying on the ground. They'll see some random piece of trash on the ground. Oh gosh. That's a rest monster. He will destroy our equipment. We need to murder him immediately. Okay. Uh, once we complete the puppy quest, we can give pieces of candy to the little girl who assigned us the puppy quest, and it will give us a little bit of piety. As I was saying, you'll see experienced AM players checking weights of random pieces of equipment. It's because they know there's an artifact variant of it. Or they'll know that there is like a mithril version and a manium version, etc. And they can tell by the weight what the equipment's made out of and if it's an artifact. Because they're epic, and I'm not. Alright. 
Someday. Someday I might get there. Oh, there's herbs on this level. And this loot was sitting on herbs. Since that bush is by itself, I will take it. We will isolate these into a 4x4 four four square. Oh, gosh. Too late. Okay. Anyway, if you can get a 4x4 four four square, it will stabilize. Oh, we forgot to eat our rats. Do we still have them? Yeah. We still have them. Let's eat them before they go bad. Uh, if you get the herbs in a 4x4 four four square, they stabilize so they do not die out. If you do not do that, the herbs will usually die out. There are some other formations that will survive. I don't know them off the top of my head. Usually what I do when I'm not recording is I pull up an online version of Conway's Game of Life in a side window. And the herbs grow according to Conway's Game of Life. So you can put the configuration into that game and watch how the herbs grow, and you will know how the herbs will grow in the game. Can't do that very well while on video. I may do that when we get to a place called the Big Room, because it's very important to have stable herb patches there. That is a fairy dragon. Let's murder it. What did I just cast? I accidentally wasted the casting of Ethel Bridge. That was so stupid, because that's such an important spell. Okay. Are there no more herbs? There better be herbs. Two locked doors. Ugh. And for nothing. Okay. So we almost had a stable herb patch. We wasted it. With my luck, it turns out that, that other formation was stable too. But, you know. That's fine. Wasting herbs. Uh, the herbs you want to get are Morgia Root, Mossa Moralin, Spence weed and stomophilia. Uh, there's some other herbs that are situationally useful early in the game, later on, not so much. Morgia trains. I believe it's. Will and something, and then Moss Raylan trains dexterity and something. I should really, really know that. You see, I'm on video right now, so my brain doesn't work. Um. So you want to farm them so that you can eat them and increase your stats. Spence weed. And we will see if we have spence weed, actually. We do not. Spence weed. You rub all over your body and it heals you. Kind of handy. Stomophilia. Fills your stomach. Also, there's stomaseptia, which grows in the same spot, which reduces your satiation so you can eat more if you find a bunch of corpses you want to eat. Both are very handy. We're going to murder this guy. We don't muck around with oozes. We are, however, going to stop and read books. What is this thick tome? Lordly Might, super awesome spell. We're going to save it. I'm actually going to leave it on these stairs for later so we don't accidentally destroy it in a trap. Something just opened those. Ha! Something is invisible right there. And behind it is a rest monster. So you know what? We're going to kill them both. And the other thing did not die. So let's do this again. And it's still not dead. Oh, because it wasn't in the doorway. It was standing right there. This may hit us. I'm going to cast it anyway. Because you don't muck around with invisible stuff. Is it dead or did it hide somewhere? I'm going to hold on to that book because I did not see a death message. See, it says it hit something, but the thing never died. So you know what? We're going to chill right here for a minute. Okay, so whatever that was may be dead, but I'm not going to mess with it. We sensed the Pious Aura, aura which means that there is a altar somewhere on this level. Guessing the invisible thing was an invisible stalker, since it was not firing projectiles at us. We are now looking for a hidden door somewhere, and we're getting hungry, and I believe we only have one ration. 
Ooh, this could get tight. And we're hungry again. Okay, so you know what we're going to do? Since we found a shortcut earlier, we're going to go to the shortcut. We're going to take it up. And we will come back down the other way. And that will help us to find the missing passage. I really hope we don't starve to death. I'm going to drop this book here so we can get it later. That way it doesn't get destroyed by traps. Or get left on our body when we starve to death, which is very possible right now. Oh gosh! Let's keep going for now. We might find something to eat. We can eat bones, but they offer almost no satiation. Same thing with candy. Take that axe, since it's obviously a higher metal mithril, I think. Really need something to eat. Bingo! Oh, oh, thank heavens. I could have prayed for satiation, but it really would have been a waste of a prayer. Especially since we were about to find food anyway. How are we doing with this weapon? Level 4. I'll get it up one more level. And we're hungry again. Really hope we find something to eat. Don't want to waste a prayer. Have we fully explored this level? I think we have other than up here. And it's locked, so we're not going to mess with it. My luck, there's food sitting right on the other side of that door. Oh, wrong button. What? What? Ha ha, there were corpses on this level and they rotted away as soon as we entered it. That's lame. Small shield worth having? Not really. Oh gosh! So many rust monsters. And we actually angered this guy. I just got a disarm trap on him. That was smart. We actually angered him because I don't think he would normally be hostile to us. Did you drop a corpse? You did. That's awesome. I also pick up uh, robes because there's a small chance that they will be a robe of invisibility. Normally they don't appear until deeper levels of the dungeon, but I'm thinking of a treasure hunter. They might appear sooner. I'm not quite sure. I could have sworn I found one in a very early level of the dungeon once. Ugh, we're so hungry. So there are two upstairs. That means one of them goes back up to the non-secret passage way of doing things. Did we check this pile? Oh, Orc Scorcher Corpse. Beautiful. And a square key, which will let us lock that door if we need to. Spellbook of Light. Neutral Altar. Let's drop everything. Try the rope, try on the gloves, boots, axe. We have more holy water, which is good. Do we have less morgue root? Oh, we do, and we have four of them. You have to eat four of them to get the effect. So you know what? We're going to eat those. Coat. And here in a little bit, they'll increase their stat. We'll see a message down in the log about it. I forget what all we just pick up.
I'll just check everything here. Pretty good battle axe, but you know I'm going to stick with the spear, because as I said in an earlier episode, if we train spears, they start offering us a DV bonus, which makes us to where we can block attacks. See, DV represents your ability to dodge or block. So, spears, as you train them, increase your ability to dodge and block. So, we're going to stick with that since we're a spellcaster, primarily. Although, we will eventually, at least temporarily, be switching to an axe, because I know where really nice axe is. Um, but yeah, now let's uh, stick with the spear for now. Okay. Oh yeah, we probably have other things we need to try on, don't we? I will take that to hit and damage penalty to get an extra point of PB. Damage reduction is always good. These light boots are just as worthless as our leather boots. Okay. Let's uh, keep going downwards for right now. Okay, so the door blew up and destroyed our torch. Not so bad. Could have been much worse. That's why you're supposed to open... Well, explosions will hit you even if you're diagonally, as we just saw. Yes! We are saved on food. Thank heavens. This is the arena. See, we hear the ecstatic cries of a large crowd. They're these guys, rattling traders, who sell food. Most of their food is disgusting. However, cooked lizards, which our first guy sells, are amazing. We're going to buy a bunch of them. That'll keep us fed for quite a while. We're also going to rename him so we know he sells cooked lizards. There we go. Let's talk to the others, find out if any of them sell cooked lizards. He sells fat worms. We don't want fat worms. Da, 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 da. Don't want to mess with you right now. Chat. Do you want to buy some cooked roaches? No, I don't think we want cooked roaches. Not today. Da, 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 da. Do you want to buy some cooked roaches? No, I don't want to buy cooked roaches. Cooked roaches sound nasty. Fried bat. Most things in here, unless you're an orc or a troll, you will not eat them. You cannot eat them cooked roaches, fat worms, bleh. but you can eat cooked bat, it's just not as good as lizards, it's not satiating for the price. Do we only have one guy selling, uh... Cook lizard. This is a different guy, isn't it? Okay, so I think we have two people selling lizards, and they're both over here. Alright, this guy over here is the arena master. He'll let you fight in the arena. We don't want to do that right now. We will do that later. Why do we only have 20 lizards? I thought we bought more than that. As you see, they're quite filling. Anyway, he lets you fight in this place down here, which is an arena. He puts you in against random monsters. Some of those monsters can be tough. Most of them are not. I'm going to buy some more lizards for the road. Um, sometimes cats spawn in there. You want to make sure you have a way to deal with cats? We do, because we can teleport them out of the arena with Ethereal Bridge, which disqualifies them and means we automatically win. There are tactics to use Potion of Exchange on them, which will transmute them into a different kind of monster. We're going to wait on that, though, because there's a quest later on that requires us to defeat the Arena Champion. So, we beat 20 Arena Manches and the Arena Champion. So, we're actually going to wait for that quest before we muck around with the Arena. I'm going to kill a Suze if he'll get where I can kill him.
close these doors so the monsters don't actually get in there and kill our food vendors. Is that broadsword any good? No. Oh, now we find more food. Haha, uh -huh, so good. Alright. Alright, this is the big room. We're going to move through it as quickly as possible because herbs always spawn this room. We want to find them. And we want to stabilize them. Try to keep monsters from destroying them. Okay, so here's the choice. Because we can either keep this square here, or we can delete these three, and it will cause a square to form here. Because a 2x2 two two with one missing will turn into a square. So we're going to try to figure out what this herb is. That's Stomophilia. We're going to try to figure out what this herb is. Demon Daisy Allurus Antidote. And this is Curia Mancox. So we're going to get rid of Curia Mancox and one of these. And now we have a square that gives us... Allure's Antidote, and Stomophilia. Stomophilia gives us satiation, as I said earlier. And Allure's Antidote cures poison. We are just going to kind of speed through this looking for herbs right now. Because if the herb is not in an appropriate formation, it will wilt away before we get to it. Unless we speed th through. We do deal with things like this, though. Because one, an Ice Vortex could destroy a plot of a plot of herbs next of all they're extremely dangerous okay we luckily have some resistance to him because we have the topaz ring on which gives us some elemental resistance do we have anything to deal with him I don't think we do we're going to try casting another spell I hate to cast spells in this room because ah, our cure potion was shattered Cure poison. I mean, our cure poison potion was shattered. That kind of sucks. Been worse. Hate to uh, cast long range spells in this room, though, because there's always a chance that there's a cat just out of view and that the spell will hit the cat. I would normally go for that wand, but right now we are on a quest for herbs. But again, hate to use spells. Can't risk being hit by a rust monster. Oh gosh. Run away. Running away. Oh, and there's a guy that can spurt fire. Oh, finally, we got rid of the rust monster. Am I going to kill this guy before he actually destroys some herbs? Okay. Okay. Okay, so we need to figure out what herbs we want to save here. That's Morgia. I don't forget. That's uh, Pepper Petal. Some Septia. We already have Stomophil Septia, Stoma Septia on lock. So, I forget, is there anything growing under here? No, there isn't. We're going to let that grow so we have a square Morgia. I have some feeling that might have been something we could have stabilized, but I'm not sure. So, since I can't get into a game of life sim while we are recording, I will just harvest it. Would have liked to have gotten some stabilized Mars Moss Morellin. That didn't happen. But, all in all, we have Morgue Root, we have Stomophilia, so that's good. Gotta be careful in here, there are some pretty badass monsters that show up sometimes. So if I'd known about the uh, Stomophilia in here, I wouldn't have bought all of those lizards on a stick, because Stomophilia serves the same purpose. 
great place to grind, grind items. What is that? Okay, here comes a guy that can breathe fire and a guy that can stun, stun us. So, let's try to deal with that. Another dirty tome. Ooh, we are overburdened. We have to drop some useless junk. Well, let's drop more useless junk. Seems good to me. Oh, that's bad. I think he's right in front of us, though. That is an Ogre Magus. Oh, we got so lucky that he's where we could hit us. Uh, we talked about that in the previous episode. Ogre, Ogre mazes is very, very dangerous because they turn invisible and they usually like to stay just a little ways out away from you so that you cannot figure out where they are. And so they just kind of wander around just barely in your range, hittering you with cones of ice while invisible so you can't figure out where they are to target them. There's some ways to deal with that. Uh, none of them are very effective in this room, though, because usually you want to get them in a contained area so you can start, like, shooting arrows at, and when you see an arrow hit something in midair, you know that you've hit that monster. Uh, or you can throw a potion of invisibility, or potion of visibility generally where you think they are. None of that's applicable in this room. So, kind of a pain. Oh, we need to drop something. You know what? Let's drop that and that, since we don't really need a food supply right now. And our herbs are sta stabilized. This is their final form. When they get to this, you can get the best harvest out of them. If you harvest too many past that stage, that herb bush will die. What was that message? You suddenly age. Sometimes when ghosts hit you, it ages you. Probably all the Lurus Antidotus will need for this game. Oh gosh, so number one priority here, even more than saving ourselves, lead him away from the herbs. And we did. spawn more spiders. And she got away to spawn more spiders. Lovely. Let's get this potion up here. I guess there are uses for pepper petals. But, uh, I don't know. I've never messed with them that much. You have to understand, uh, up until probably the last year, I never messed with herbalism because I didn't know how super effective it was. And now I know it's super effective. Thanks to the videos by a Mr. Gordon Overkill, who I highly recommend to anyone who is trying to learn how to play this game. Okay. 
really would like to max that literacy. Alright, let's see what those Lurus Anodotus is, right? Suddenly feel relieved. The poison is gone. And we got a worm tome. And a large spider corpse, which we'll eat because that'll grant us poison resistance. Kill this guy before he can breathe fire. Okay, so this just got problematic. Because that eye there can destroy equipment. I believe he's immune to divine wrath. Okay. We might be in a low, little over our heads here. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. I have a strategy. We're going to teleport that guy away for right now. What? He resists the spell. Oh, gosh. Okay, we're lucky he didn't destroy our equipment. Alright, we are going to eat that spider corpse real quick. Stomach burns. That means we are now poison resistant. We are also going to eat an Alerus Anodotus. Cure the poison. We're going to kill him. And you know what? At this point, I am more interested in getting away than I am fighting her. But if we can kill her, that would be awesome. She has been... A total pain. There we go. She's dead. We're stuck on a web. Okay. Take that torch. Go reclaim this arrow. Kill that. And we will come back for more herb farming in a later episode. In case you notice, we did falling downstairs because we we're carrying too much. It's fine. We are almost to our destination. But for now, that will be the end of this episode. Thank you for tuning in. In the next episode, we should be reaching a little subterranean town complete with tavern. Very exciting. See you then.